All right. So in addition to working on page five this week, we're also going to be looking at um, our reading, which covers pages six, seven, and um, eight, I believe, um, in our interactive notebook. So this is quite the large reading. Um, couple of pages that we're going over and reading together. So you do need your book, your textbook. If you don't have it, go grab it out of your cubby and um, restart the video in order to read along and follow along. Okay, so we are um, again continuing our reading. It's on page 94. So we use 94 for our map up here. Um, but now we're going to actually continue to read. And we're going to read about government and sumer, writing, other innovations, and a couple of different things. So first up, government and sumer. When large numbers of people live and work in one place, they need a system for making decisions, managing conflicts, and keeping order. In other words, they need some form of government. In each city-state, one person, the N, ruled as king. This means that the Sumerians had a monarchy or a governing system ruled by a king or a queen. In Sumerian city-states, the rulers were always men. The N held absolute authority or complete control over his city-state. His most important duties included leading the military, arranging trade, settling arguments, and directing public events, including religious ceremonies. Sumerian monarchs were believed to have been chosen by the gods because of their leadership. They were called great men. Some great rulers were honored in Sumerian legends. The story of the godlike king, Gilgamesh, has become a part of world literature today. And we're actually going to dive into Gilgamesh a little bit more. That's page nine of your interactive notebook. Sumerian rulers needed to help rule over many people in large areas of land successfully. They created the world's first known bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is a governing group made of non-elected officials. In Sumer, most of those in the bureaucracy were priests or religious leaders. Their duties included choosing and making lands for farming, as well as distributing food to people in cities. Sumerian government officials needed a way to keep track of food brought from the farm fields to storehouses. They also wanted to record the amounts of food given out to people. In addition, they needed to list any surpluses, so any extra food, um, that were used for trading. The desire to keep such records led to one of the Sumerian civilization's greatest contributions to world history, writing. Okay, writing. Sumerian became the first, uh, Sumerian became the first written language. The earliest writings were government lists and records. Using sharpened reeds as writing tools, officials marked numbers and pictographs, or picture writing, on wet clay which dried into hard tablets. Over time, the Sumerians found ways to improve the writing. They began to use symbols instead of pictures to stand for words. This became, um, the system came to be called cuneiform, or wedge-shaped writing. Cuneiform symbols could be combined to stand for words or sounds. The importance of keeping accurate records also led to other innovations such as measuring systems. The Sumerians created a standard unit for measuring an area of land, such as a crop field. They called it the Aiku. Today we call it an acre. The containers that held grain became a basic measurement for volume, the court, which we still use courts today. Okay, so this would be an example of cuneiform right here on, on a clay tablet. Okay, this is called a primary source. A primary source is a source that was made, um, created um, in history. Super neat. And these are some of the pictographs or pictures that stood for um, words and how they changed over time. 
So when they first just developed writing, the sun looked like this, then it changed and it finally became to be this. Okay, so if you look at how drastically some of these changed, it's quite interesting. Notice they became sort of shorter and easier to write. Definitely. But if we look over here, this looks more like a star to me than this does. And this looks more like mountains to me than this does. And this looks more like a bird to me than that does. So, or this looks like more like grains and crops than that does. So I definitely have to say that the pictographs, because they were literally drawing a picture of what they were seeing, um, definitely looks more like what the, they're trying to represent. Another innovation made it possible to measure long periods of time. The Sumerians developed a calendar divided into 12 months based on the 28-day cycle of the moon. Since a year made up 12, was made up of 12 lunar or moon months is shorter than it. Since a year made up of 12 lunar or moon months is shorter than a solar or sun year, an extra month was added every three years. Today, the Sumerians are remembered for their innovations, too. They were the first to build sailboats, which they used to travel along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. They were among the first to mix copper and tin to make bronze tools and weapons. The Sumerians also invented the potter's wheel to help them form bowls, bases, and jars from clay. So they did a lot of really cool things. Divisions in society. So this would be your social hierarchy which we look at on page seven of our interactive notebook. Sumerian society was highly organized. People belong to different social classes. Social classes um, group people of the same level of importance in their society. The highest or ruling class in Sumer was made up of the king, important government officials, priests, and warriors. It also included their families. Few Sumerians were part of the ruling class. Many were members of the middle class. Some were less important, government officials, craft workers, farming supervisors, or merchants. A merchant is a person who buys or sells traded goods. Other worker, others worked as doctors, carpenters, potters, or bricklayers. Slaves and farm workers made up the lowest level or working class in Sumerian society. Most slaves were prisoners of war. These people have been captured in battle. After the battle, they returned with the Sumerian soldiers to one of the Sumerian city-states. They were forced to work for a period of time. Some slaves, however, were people who had been enslaved as punishment for crimes or to pay off debts or money they owed. A debt is what we owe, right? Slaves in Sumerian society were not enslaved for life. Those who owed a debt, for example, could gain their freedom when their debt was paid. In all classes of Sumerian society, men had more authority and independence than women. Men had nearly all of the leadership roles in Sumerian government. In contrast, family life was matriarchal or ruled by the oldest woman in the family. Some women were important religious leaders too. Sumerian women had more rights and freedoms than many women in other ancient civilizations had. Unlike women in some places, the women of Sumer could own property and run businesses. Some were taught to read and write in cuneiform. Most Sumerian women, however, only managed their own households. Okay. And that would conclude our reading for um, pages six and seven of our interactive notebook. So page six is all about cuneiform. And page seven is all about our social hierarchy. So we're going to take a look at our PowerPoint here. All right. And so on page six of your interactive notebook, we are looking solely at cuneiform. All right. So we have three flaps. We have the, the year that it was created, what tools and materials were needed to write, and why was cuneiform important? So on our first flap, when was it created? Well, it was created approximately 3000 BC, okay? What materials were needed to make it? Clay tablets and a sharpened reed to use as a kind of like a stylus or a pencil. 
They baked the clay in the sun so the tablets would last a very long time. Okay, so you're writing down exactly what's written here. And why was cuneiform important? Well, it was the first known recorded language. It led to other forms of writing. Okay, it was the first written language that we know of. So go ahead and pause this video and write all that information down in your flaps. And then we're going to go on to page 7, which is uh, the Sumerian social hierarchy, right? We have some lines here. We don't have any flaps, but we have some lines to write some information down. Um, so our highest uh, at the total top of the hierarchy is called the nobles or the ruling class. And this was priests, officials, and royals. Um, consist of a very small group in the total population, very tiny group of the total population, okay? Next is our middle class, the craftsmen and commoners. These were workers for the nobles and palaces. They held jobs involving farming, fishing, and crafting. And then we have our... Um, very bottom very, very bottom class, which include farmers and slaves. And 90% of the population were farmers. So if you can imagine, our upper class and our middle class only make up 10% of the total population because 90% of the population were farmers. Um, slaves, uh, slaves mostly worked on palace building projects and they were owned by the palace, right? And most of them were... Um, victims or, you know, they were captured in the war and they are working to pay off or earn their keep. And um, some were working to pay off, working to pay off debts and things like that. Or maybe they committed a crime and, and um, they had to become a slave for five years in order to be free again. Okay, so that um, this information you're going to want to write completely down, so go ahead and pause the video if you need to do so. But other than that, that wraps up our third video lecture.